All right, before we talk about some historical epic, I do want to thank the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Factor. Factor delivers fresh, never frozen meals and a variety of options right to your door, which makes sure you always have a meal ready on hand, which is perfect because like I've said before, grocery shopping, I find it about as enjoyable as stepping on a drop of water while wearing socks. I don't like it, I'd rather game. I'd rather game. Let's face it, in this world we have enough to think, stress, and worry about. Let food not be one of life's stresses. Give us tasty, prepped, ready in two minutes meals for that binge of the four hour cut of the movie. You can add or subtract the number of weekly meals on your plan per week, or skip a week entirely if you need to. I appreciate that kind of understanding. With Factors Keto, Calorie Smart, Chef's Choice, Vegan, Veggie Options, 27 plus meals and 33 plus add-on options, they got your flavor for when that PB&J bender has run its course. Bachelor life, I hear ya. So click the link below, go to factor75.com and use code JOHNS50 to get yourself 50% off your first Factor box. And thank you so much to Factor for sponsoring this video. I do appreciate it. And now, Ridley Scott Epic. So Napoleon is the newest Ridley Scott epic about the life and times of Napoleon Bonaparte. Well, I mean, not his whole life. When doing a movie like this, you don't necessarily want to be like, and when he was born, you know, you don't have to start there. It's a rough time for French citizens and French history. Napoleon Bonaparte's this young, ambitious officer goes from that to leader, king, emperor, guy who screwed over Edmund Dantes. And in biopic fashion, we get a look at the man behind the curtain of history. And Joaquin Phoenix was great in the role, goes without say, you knew he would be. Funny call is that Joaquin Phoenix sounds like Joaquin Phoenix. He's playing a French person. In a biopic, you can do one of three things. If you're going really ambitious, you can have it all in the native language, all in French and subtitle. Or you can have the actors use French accents to illustrate the point. Or you can say, fuck it all together, Joaquin Phoenix sounds like Joaquin Phoenix. Russians sound British in Chernobyl. Russians also sound like this in Red October. That's essentially what this movie does. I have faith that that was the best call. Maybe the actors just aren't that great at doing French accents, maybe just sounded forced. But what really makes this performance stand out, he puts the Napoleon back in Napoleon complex. You've always heard the term Napoleon complex. It's usually someone who's short, and they're trying to just puff their chest and act tougher than they are. But if you look into it, Napoleon was just average height, but Napoleon complex in this performance persists. Him projecting his insecurities, his inability to get out of his own way. Those moments of this is a very volatile political situation. Just don't say any, you are, but here you go. You're lashing out. But yeah, Napoleon in this movie, he was quirky, insecure. He lashed out, he was a horn dog, an asshole, but also a talented military tactician. That's part of what made the battle so engaging. Could have just made him this military leader. No, show me the flawed man behind all that. The movie's surprisingly funny too, which you may have heard about in the chatter of this film. Uh, it is surprisingly funny, which has become a red flag. Whenever I hear, oh, the movie's surprisingly funny, I'm like, oh God, forced humor. But Faith and Ridley Scott being Faith and Ridley Scott, it is executed in a much more human way, in a way that just, feels like real human interactions, you know? It's just humans being humans and that does make it humorous. Also shows how editing changes the context of something. Couple of scenes in the trailer, they don't come across as humorous, but in the movie they were. A scene where Vanessa Kirby's hiking up her skirt and he looks down in the trailer, it almost feels like, yeah, that's mine, I'm gonna smash that. In the movie, it's much more humorous the way he's trying to maintain eye contact and slowly just looks down. Also the line in the trailer where he's talking about people who make mistakes and he's like, I simply never do. You're like, oh, this guy's gonna fuck shit up. But in the movie, he's talking to a bunch of kids and the way he's like, yeah, people make mistakes. I, I don't though, I never do. And that is funny because we've seen him make mistakes. We've all known that person or seen that kind of person talk where you're like, are you just unaware or are you lying? I wanna know the rose colored goggles you have on when you look in the mirror. Vanessa Kirby was great in the film as well. Her character and Napoleon had a very interesting and complex dynamic. They had a very volatile relationship to say the least. There were some moments where I was like, well, yeah, that's a, I do appreciate the accuracy of the times. But Vanessa Kirby has been having a hell of a run. We know she's great at this point, but for her to stand out in a film about Napoleon acting opposite Joaquin Phoenix, in a Ridley Scott film with epic battle sequences, that is something. It's, it's like there are so many elements at play to be scene stealers and show stealers. Joaquin Phoenix is a show stealer. Vanessa Kirby's a show stealer. The battle sequences themselves, show stealers. And that brings us to the battle sequences. They are out of control, great. I could have gone for more of them. You know, a movie like this is gonna have that text at the end that comes up giving you the summary. It talks about 
Napoleon being in 61 battles. I was like, I, I feel like I saw about three of them. But again, it wants to strip that away, concentrate more on his personal life. But I really wanted more of those battles because they tasted that good. I mean, they were really raw. You gotta know that. Blood, death, destruction, even the horses bite it. I'll warn you right here, a horse takes a cannonball right to the chest in one scene. But I appreciate that kind of historical accuracy. Some people might be like, oh, they didn't need to show that, but it's like that, it makes it feel more real. But now that we've talked about the positives, this movie definitely does have pacing and time management issues. Not only does this movie feel like it takes place in the course of about a couple years, which is absolutely not the case, but there are pacing issues with the movie just felt like it was dragging on. But I felt like this two hour, 40 minute movie was longer than Oppenheimer. I've used Oppenheimer as an example a few times because in a world where 2023 was like, two and a half hours is the new two. We've had three and a half hour long movies, two and a half hour long movies, Oppenheimer's right in the middle. So I always think, did it feel longer or shorter than Oppenheimer? That said, this next part might shock you. I'm really looking forward to the four hour cut of Napoleon. Cause it's all about pacing. You can have a two hour, 40 minute cut of a movie that feels much longer than two hours and 40 minutes. You can have a four hour cut of that same movie that feels much shorter than four hours. Can't help but think an hour and 20 minutes of this movie missing means there are these important moments that aid in the flow that are just gone. And that's why the movie feels longer. So in a world where a four hour cut of this movie would be longer, but in theory could smooth the movie out. I'm definitely gonna look forward to that. Unless it doesn't, in which case it's just nearly an hour and a half longer, an entire rom-com runtime longer. Like in the end, Napoleon has a lot working for it. Joaquin Phoenix, Vanessa Kirby, the costumes, the sets, the set design, the grand scope and scale of the entire thing and how practical it feels. Epic battle sequences. It truly is cinematically immersive. For better or for worse, because now you're immersed in a movie that has some pacing issues. Those pacing issues aside, still enjoyed myself. Good time, no alcohol required. All right, so Napoleon, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Or what's your favorite historical epic. Whatever it is, whatever you think, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.